Oh yeah, the Dark Knight. Was there any doubt? I don't think there's any doubt. This is the biggest one. This is the one that did it. You can't really argue with the Dark Knight as the most successful literally in its mission, in the wider consciousness, and just as an incredibly compelling film. I, I can't really argue with it being on top. The Dark Knight is the number one best superhero movie of all time. This is one of the best movies of all time. It's not, it's not a matter about best comic book movies. There's no other movie on this list that has done for comic book movies what The Dark Knight did. It furthered the art of superhero movie making where people started taking it seriously. This movie elevated the superhero subgenre to a whole other level. This movie absolutely changed the game forever. We were just wandering around stunned after we saw this movie in theaters. And people that didn't care about comics or normally consider seeing Batman movies, people on NPR were talking about how great this movie was. It was like waking up in an alternate universe where people get it and care. It was amazing. Now there's a Batman. This showed the brilliance of Christopher Nolan, of what he's capable of as a director. Dark Knight is, is Nolan's full capacity as a filmmaker come to fore in a superhero film. Like he did Interstellar, he did Inception. These are grand concept movies. So to see that applied to a superhero film is incredible. He had something in his mind, and for him to put it on screen in such a way that was so powerful and so mesmerizing, and so perfect. I mean, that's a masterful filmmaker. Christopher Nolan and his ace cinematographer Wally Pfister brought such a sense of life to this movie, such a richness, it felt real. I mean, I know this movie was filmed in our world, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like Gotham. I got lost in that. Christopher Nolan has this idea to how to shoot scope in a way that almost no one else has. His bank robbery scene that is largely based on the bank robbery scene from Heat, amazing, opens the movie. You have any idea who you're stealing from? You and your friends are dead! My favorite scene from The Dark Knight is actually the opening scene when you have the bank robbers going in with the clown mask because you didn't know what was happening. And then you see as it unfolds how carefully it was planned out by the Joker. And that right there set the tone for the entire movie. This movie is almost 10 years old and I think that it holds up because it's not just a comic book movie. Because this movie is such a crime caper, it ups the ante about everything. It makes everything feel a little bit more real. For lack of a better word, it was like kind of like a gangster film, but with a dude who dresses up as a bat. And the main gangster guy is a guy who dresses up like a suicidal clown. It's literally like, kind of like watching Law and Order or something like that, or maybe The, the Sopranos, but with like, freaky characters. You see, this is how crazy Batman's made Gotham. In The Dark Knight, we get introduced to one of the most legendary replacements of all time. Maggie Gyllenhaal taking over the Rachel Dawes character. No, 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 it's the Joker. The way they introduce the Joker in this movie is really one of the most powerful villain introductions I think I've ever seen. How about a magic trick? You have this Joker that is frightening, chaotic, unpredictable and it doesn't fall into kind of this comedic cliche crazy bad guy shtick. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. They've tried to put a backstory to him before in in Tim Burton's Batman. They've tried to give him so many different character quirks over the years, but at the heart of the Joker, he's an anarchist. He's just pure anarchy. What an incredible Joker that Heath Ledger creates. You wanna know how I got these scars? That voice, and, and, and what do you do? And it's like, you're like, yeah, that's creepy fucker. Like, I get excited when I talk about it. People say, was he that good? Or is he remembered as being that good because of what happened? No, he was that good. Whew. It is a tour de force performance for the ages and it elevated superhero movies to a level where these are movies that can be taken seriously by everybody, including those stuffy old people that vote on the Academy Awards. Hi. It won Heath Ledger an Oscar because it was this method performance of the Joker of a character iconic Jack Nicholson had already done. Wouldn't hit a guy with glasses on, would you? Jack's Joker stands up on its own. It's its own kind of take on it. This is a realistic take on a madman, and I love what Ledger did with it. Deserves all the accolades. As much as I love the Jack Nicholson version of the character, this was both 
completely surprising and a perfect interpretation. And when those come along, you just treasure it. Love you, Jack. Sorry. It's a different, you're playing different games. That's a different league. Like, are you serious? Or more like, why so serious? And I thought my jokes were bad. Everyone talks about Heath Ledger in this movie. Don't discount Christian Bale. What he's bringing to the table as Bruce Wayne in this film, he's beaten down a little bit. He's obsessive. He becomes almost everything that the Joker wants him to become in this movie. And I've seen now what I would have to become to stop men like him. There's a moment in that interrogation scene where you really think that Batman could just twist his neck and just break him. Christian Bale is bringing this unhinged quality to Batman where you, for a split second, might think that he just loses it. And it's perfect. Where are they? I really like where his character came to in the second film, the struggle that goes on, and him still wanting to be with, well, now Hall instead of Holmes. <coughs> I had nothing against Katie Holmes. I, I, I love Batman Begins, and I don't, I don't think Katie Holmes did a bad job. But you're gonna switch it out if you're gonna get Maggie Gyllenhaal. She brought it, there was a depth, a sadness, it worked. Oh, yeah, you wanna flip a coin to see who leads? I mean, you wanna talk performance-wise? Mackie Gyllenhaal's a better actress, I and mean, there's no doubt about it. The supported characters, Kane and Freeman and Oldman in this franchise are phenomenal. Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon like looks like he's off the page of a Frank Miller comic book. Commissioner Gordon. Look, I'll always be partial to Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent, but Aaron Eckhart did a great job. Well, that's a start. I think it's one of Aaron Eckhart's best performances. He's fantastic in the role, and I just love where he fits into the story overall. I think Aaron Eckhart, and this was the first time I was really aware of him, is awesome in this part. To Harvey Dent, let's hear it for him. Harvey Dent as that kind of white knight example, and as someone who Bruce Wayne looks to as carrying on maybe the mantle beyond Batman is an interesting concept. It's all of Joker's plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? The entire twist is always about Harvey Dent and how he made this morally right dude make these horrendous choices. He becomes the villain that he didn't want to become. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Without the Harvey Dent storyline, this movie doesn't work. I love Heath Ledger's performance, but Joker storyline, it all ends with Harvey Dent. It has to be about Harvey Dent. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! I am very happy to see The Dark Knight come in at number one. I think it really deserves it. It is the godfather of superhero movies. I love this movie. It absolutely deserves to be number one. The Dark Knight is not only one of the best superhero movies of all time, but also one of the best movies of all time. This is the difference between Logan and The Dark Knight. Logan checks all of the boxes. The Dark Knight checks them, then puts a star, then an exclamation point, and then is like, actually, screw the box. We don't even need your box. In order to top The Dark Knight, a movie would have to deliver a transcendent experience and deliver a masterpiece in, in direction, acting, story, dialogue, script. It's something that highly unlikely. I think it's gonna be a challenge for a movie to top The Dark Knight in the near future, but there is no doubt in my mind that it's possible. I don't know if that's ever going to be possible. For The Dark Knight to be unseated, it's gonna take a pitch perfect film. Hopefully we'll get one. I'd love to see The Dark Knight get knocked off because that means we have another amazing movie in superhero film. But it hasn't happened yet.